Good morning YouTube. I'm going to do a short little video on um, painting birds. And the reason I'm doing this video is not to show you a tutorial on how I painted this bird. Um, because there's tons of tutorials already on YouTube. It's about how to incorporate your birds into a complete painting. Um, this is a bunting. Uh, a painted bunting. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. And I want to point out a few things. First of all, notice this shadow. So there's a light source in this shadow. It's not just a flat bird. Secondly, the bird occupies a space within the paper. Um, and that means there's a, a background. There's a place you can envision him in a tree or in a bush. He's not just a bird on a flat piece of paper. And I think a lot of tutorial videos, they show you how to paint the bird, but they don't show you how to, or an apple, but they don't incorporate that into a finished painting. And I think that's something that a lot of painters, or especially newer painters, need to think about and be aware of is, okay, here's my subject. How does this subject fit into a larger piece? A complete piece? Um, where's the light source? Where's the shadow source? How is, is there any action? I like to put action in a lot of my paintings. Um, this is not my best work, but he's good enough for the what I'm trying to point out. You know, typically you want to think of your golden ratio. So you want him either in the top third or the bottom third. And he's kind of low for what I prefer. I put the branch there because there's way too much negative space. Um, but he's still done well enough to where, you know, he has weight. You almost want to pet the little bird as you tweet, tweet, tweets. Um, but when you paint, remember your subject needs to occupy a space. Um, don't forget when you're painting to give it some background color. You know, here I got some light cerulean blue around it, so he has some sky. He's not just a bunch of paint on a white piece of paper. Unless that's kind of what you're looking for, like a vignette. But even if I were to map this, He's going to occupy that space, the branches are going to be there, and he's going to be in that tree. And it's going to add a lot of value to your overall painting. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to point out, because I'm looking at so many YouTube videos, and they'll do, oh, here's the head, and here's the sketch, and they're painting in their sketch, but there's nothing to their sketch. There's no full composition. And, you know, if I'm painting him on a log or a tree branch, What's beyond that tree branch? Is there anything beyond that tree branch? Is there a sky? Is there clouds? Are there other branches in the tree? Um, think about that when you're painting your paintings and I think you'll be a lot more pleased and find out that overall everything looks a lot better than just painting your bird. Because um, lots of times this can offset any small minor defects that might be present in your bird. And remember to keep the same style. So if you have a really, really detailed, surreal bird, make sure you have a really, really detailed, surreal background. Um, remember that things are going to be more detailed up front and less detailed farther away. Um, remember to keep be consistent with your light source. Remember to add shadows. Um, if you can, have value changes so everything's not flat, so that your bird has weight, so that you know you can put your finger up there and the bird might just hop on. Those are things to think about when um, doing your paintings. And if you have questions or if you have other advice, please share them, like and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.